This week on Inside the Investigations, a five-year-old and a college doctoral student are dead after a concrete pump truck collided with the school bus. Federal records show the truck driver, who police say admitted to doing drugs earlier that day, legally wasn't allowed to be behind the wheel. Senior investigative producer David Barrere and public safety reporter Brianna Hollis discuss why the company he worked for and the state didn't remove him from the road earlier. Good morning, everybody, and thanks so much for joining us here on KXAN Live. I'm Will Dupree coming to you from the KXAN Live studio for another edition of Inside the Investigations. Joining me, as we all have been the last few months, is Kelly Wiley, an investigative reporter here at KXAN. Kelly, nice to see you. Thank you again for joining us and for highlighting some of the stories that you and the team are doing. No, it's nice to see you too. And today's a little different because I feel like Brie is on our investigative team anyway, but she really kind of operates more like the daily grind side, which is, she's amazing. And she's joining us today too. So that's like a special treat. Yeah. And here are our guests today, Brianna Hollis and David Barrer. Thank you both for being here. We appreciate that. And it's nice to see you all as well. Hi guys. Good morning. Good, morning. Good to see you too. Just want to highlight really quickly the story that we're talking about. You can read it right now on our homepage at KXAN.com, but the headline there, Concrete Pump Truck Driver and School Bus Crash Deemed Imminent Hazard. This house, this story is so shocking, and uh, I'm glad you're both here to talk through it, but uh, Kelly, I think you're starting everything off for us. Yeah, because there's been kind of a drip of information. Well, it feels like a drip, but really it's been our team pushing for answers and slowly getting them over time. But I want to kind of crank it back. It's been 11 days since the school bus crash in Bastrop. Brianna, paint the picture of what happened that day. So as we know, it was a terrible day. Imagine, you know, about 50 pre-K students on the school bus coming back from a field trip to the zoo and video from the bus shows the concrete pump truck veering in to the bus's lane. The bus then rolls over. You see people panicking, running around outside. There are drivers pulling over, stopping help. We didn't air any of the audio, but you can hear kids screaming the whole time. It's, it's pretty harrowing. And then of course, as we know, so sad, five-year-old Ulysses Rodriguez Montoya one of the students on the bus died in the crash, as well as a 33-year-old UT doctoral student, Ryan Wallace, who was in a car behind the bus. He also died that day. So already, you know, I feel like we hear about bus crashes a lot. We cover them. We hear them on our scanner every now and then. But very rarely are they so um, devastating. Very rarely do we see deaths come from them. Um, so already, I think this story left our entire team in knots. But since the crash, law enforcement have charged the driver of the concrete pump truck with criminally negligent uh, homicide. The arrest warrant, uh, their arrest warrant provided a lot of information though on the lead up to the crash. Paint that picture for us because this was like four pages long, this arrest warrant you got your hands on. And usually we don't see that much information put into them. So explain what you what you read. Right. And a lot of times charges aren't even involved either. And this, you know, the, like we mentioned, the incident itself, harrowing enough. And as we got this drip of information, it became more disturbing. So here's what that affidavit outlined. So from his hospital bed, the driver, Jerry Fernandez, reportedly told troopers about his drug use prior to the crash. And this was the timeline. He mapped out. He said that the night before he had smoked marijuana, slept for a few hours, woke up at 12.30 a.m., did cocaine at 1 a.m., then worked on the job site all day without sleeping between that, um, taking a 15-minute nap in his truck before eventually getting behind the wheel when that, when that crash ended up happening at 2 p.m. And in this affidavit, it was outlined that during this conversation that he was having with troopers, he, one, didn't seem to understand the fact that he had actually hit a school bus, and he also kept falling asleep throughout that conversation as well. And Brie, in that arrest affidavit, uh, or the warrant rather, I should say, it also painted a picture of his record as a truck driver dating back years before this crash. And David, I want to bring you into this because what did you find reading that? 
Yeah, so the uh, truck driver is uh, 43-year-old Jerry Hernandez, and the uh, affidavit outlined how he had been prohibited from uh, doing trucking three separate times because of uh, positive drug tests. Um, and he was listed as prohibited in a clearing house in a clearinghouse that's managed by uh, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. That's the uh, federal agency that has like oversight of the trucking industry because they cross state lines. Um, and so he had uh, most recently tested positive for cocaine in uh, last April. I remember when we all saw these records coming in, when Brianna obtained the arrest warrant, when you continued to push uh, on the federal and state level to see what all of this meant in the affidavit, because a lot of us were taken aback. We thought maybe we'd misunderstood what was being written down until we got this clarity. But you just think to yourself, this is kind of a driver's worst nightmare. You never really know who's behind the wheel, usually in another car, much less a truck. And so to hear that there were all these things that had happened building up to it, it's really shocking. But David, why was he still driving, knowing all of that information? Why was he still on the road behind a concrete pump truck? Well, apparently he shouldn't have been. Um, but there, in, but I think we're still trying to iron this out because there's a little bit of a complication between the timing of some federal rules that are that are coming through um, and that have, that were put in place a few years ago and that are going to be completely in place by November. But basically, um, Hernandez's commercial uh, driver's license was still valid in Texas, mm. but he was listed as prohibited in this federal clearinghouse. Um, and so this, he should have been removed, uh, according to the affidavit, by his, um, by his boss, the owner of the trucking company he was working for, because his status was listed as prohibited. He wasn't supposed to be allowed to do any um, safety sensitive functions, and that includes uh, driver, driving. Um, but the state agency here, Texas's driver's license agency, had not yet downgraded or pulled his uh, CDL. Mm -hmm. um, and we've, according to these rules that they uh, mention in the affidavit and that we read in the federal, federal register, um, there's not going to be sort of like a linking of the uh, clearinghouse and, and cooperation between that with, with the state driver's license agency so that they can pull driver, commercial driver licenses until um, November. Sorry, I'm trying to keep all of this straight in my head because it's it's a complicated it's a lot. Yeah. process and there was a lot going on. Um, I don't want to say it the wrong way. Um, so the, and, and then to go a little further, the company that uh, Hernandez was working for at the time, according to the uh, federal records, was a small uh commercial trucking company called FJM. And the owner of that company talked to police. According to this affidavit that we read, the trooper said that uh, the owner acknowledged he had not um, done a check on Hernandez's CDL status or whether, you know, his status in this clearinghouse, which apparently said uh, that he's prohibited, according to the federal uh, agency. Um, and then one more thing, uh, separate from this crash, we did also find that the owner of uh, FJM Trucking had gotten a ticket a few years ago, and this is separate from anything that had to do with the school bus. He had been ticketed uh, for a low-level misdemeanor for um, employing an unlicensed driver. Hmm. There's so much going on here. And just to paint a picture for people who are listening to this, it's taken Brianna, David, myself, our amazing assignment desks, particularly Cody Peterson, who's uh, so good. He's a former attorney. So he's a lot of the times the one helping us understand the Federal Register in particular. But it's taken all of us to try to figure out what went wrong here. And if even if all the protocols or all the procedures had gone according to plan, if that would have kept him from the road that day, we're still trying to figure that out. Um, but to just back up a little bit, the trucking company uh, that he was working for didn't even check to see if he had a valid CDL. So that's for one, what you just explained. But then two, there's this 
this uh, gray area for what our state driver's license agency potentially could have done um, to make sure he was off the road too, and to hold accountable the trucking company. And so uh, to paint one more picture for you guys, we've been going back and forth with uh, DPS, which uh, houses the driver's license division, and they were able to answer some of our questions, which made it into our reporting yesterday, is particularly around when they interact with these truck drivers? When would they ever even come across them to be able to check the clearing house? Is that when they're renewing their license? Is it when they're doing these safety inspections? But there were some questions that we quite literally got, uh, we don't know answer to, hmm. um, that we're still waiting on answers for. So just to give you some background, this is an active rolling investigation into figuring out what's going on. Yeah, Bri, I think that the maybe a question that's really lingering now is what happens next? Because there are still so many of these pieces of this story, and it's also upsetting. So what's coming next? So the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is now definitively working with Texas DPS to disqualify Hernandez's commercial driver's license. But to kind of piggyback on what Kelly was mentioning, it's there's... One of the main questions I have is if there is this clearinghouse and there is this database that has all of this documented and these these violations that the drivers had and even these notes that say they're prohibited from driving, why? It, what's the proactive monitoring system of that? That's something that we're we're still trying to look into. But like I mentioned, what we know right now is that this federal agency is now working with Texas DPS to disqualify this driver's license in particular, and hopefully we'll get some more answers soon so we can take a look at this a little more broadly. Hmm. Well, I think we're all speechless because I think we're still trying to figure so much stuff out, but I so appreciate you guys coming on and explaining in one space what we've been able to find so far. And just for those listening, these are the the most hardworking reporters. Uh, we have a strong investigative team, a strong team in general here at KXAN that are working towards towards these answers for you guys. So Brianna Hollis and David Barrere, thank you again for joining us. We really appreciate it. And uh, thank you for the reporting that you've done. Everybody can check that out over on our website. We appreciate you all. Thank you. All right. The story is this one right here. You can find it on our homepage. It's trending right now as people are diving into this tragedy that is uh, still unfolding as we get more and more details about what happened that day. So, Kelly, um, that will do it for this week's edition of Inside the Investigations. We have some more conversations coming up, a full slate almost for the next two months uh, of people uh, joining us to talk about other reports that your team is working on. The deck is stacked. It'll be, it'll be nice breaking all of it down. All right. Kelly Wiley here. Will Dupree, thank you all again so much for joining us. We appreciate it. We hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.